Hello, this is question two from paper two from the 2020 Ordinary Level Leaving Cert Maths exam. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a playlist that has all my solutions to the questions in this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question. So you can try it in your own time before looking at my solution. This question is all about coordinate geometry revolving around a triangle that we see here. Uh, they've given us these points A, B and C. They've also given us the numbers. I've put them in beside the points just. That's all that's different. Uh, they ask us in the first question to find A, B. And then they tell us that what this means. They tell us A, B is just the length between A and B. I'm going to do this two ways. Um, first, the way most students are happy to do with the formula. We, we have a form, I'll, I'll write it up here. And a formula for a distance, uh, we'll write this like this, is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Or you can mix up 1 and 2 if you want, once you do it to both of them. Or you can put this one first. Either way, that's fine. And we, you put that in. Uh, let's do it here. We'll, we'll say, um, we'll call this the x1, y1, and we'll call this x2, y2. So 4 minus minus 4. This is the bit students mess up. There's two minuses. 4 minus minus. There's this minus and this minus. Better put both of them in. You don't have to write both of them, but you do need to change it to a plus. Uh, I like to put them in like this. Uh, that's squared. And then we have a 6 minus 2. That's squared. And we have a square root over this. Uh, this is 4 plus 2, 6. 6 squared is 36. 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. And this is equal to the square root of 52. Oh, 52, not 1. They didn't ask for that though. They, asked, they didn't ask for it to look like that. They wanted it to look like A square root B. This is quite common. This happens all the time in exams. Um, I don't think the examiner fully knows, though, that the calculator will do that for you nowadays. <laughs> if you put this into the calculator, you will, let me check here, uh, you will most likely get 2 square root 13. If you have a bad calculator, though, I'll show you how to do it now. Square root of 52. What you need to do is look for a number, a square number. A uh, square number is 1, 4, 9... Um, oh, 16, 25, 36. One of these numbers that divides into this. Uh, one is useless, so I might as well rub that off. Um, and four goes into this. So that means I can, instead of writing 52, I can write square root of four multiplied by the square root of uh, 13. Be careful, you can only do this when they're both square roots. That's why I needed a square number. Um, for example, some students might write 4 multiplied. That's not true. That's not true at all. Okay, and the square root of 4, we can do that. That's quite easy. It's 2. And that's how we get something that looks like this. Uh, it's a very common thing for them to ask. And, uh, yeah, oh, that was the other thing I want to do. I want to show another way to do this question without using the formula. Let me rub this out. The answer is still down here. And without using this formula, this is how I do it. I just draw a triangle, a right angle triangle, and I ask myself, how far from here to here? That's easy, it's how far between minus two and four. They're the x parts. That must be six long. Between minus two and four must be six. How far between two and six then? That must be four long. My drawing's obviously not the best because this is longer than this. That's just Pythagoras theorem. And we all hopefully remember Pythagoras theorem. This side is equal to 6 squared plus 4 squared square root. That's what we had here. 6 squared plus 4 squared. It's the same answer. We'll get square root of 52. Uh, but just you don't need to use the formula. Although the formula is in your book and I know students uh, quite like the formula. So I guess we can keep it. Uh, now let's move on to B part uh, 1. It asks us to find the coordinates of D, the midpoint of A and B. Let me rub that out there. And the midpoint, we have a formula for that. I'll put it up here as well. Midpoint is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2. 
and then y1 plus y2 over 2. Go ahead and use the formula. I, I don't. I think the formula is uh, even silly. Oh, you know, I should have kept this in. What was that? It was 6 and 4. It's, this is one formula I never use because it's much easier to do without it. Halfway between here and here. It's 6 long, so 3. 3 bigger than minus 2. 3 smaller than 4. This middle bit must be 1. This guy must be, well, the x part of this must be 1. Halfway between these two, well, it's four long, so halfway is two. Two smaller than six, two bigger than two, it's four. One four, that's your answer. Um, one four. You don't need a formula, but the formula will give you the same answer. Right, uh, part two. Um, in the tri Oh, they draw a triangle. Well, they put, put an extra point here. Let's see, they give E here. And they draw a line and they give us this number, yes, uh, 773. Okay, the point 73 is the midpoint of AC. Show that it's parallel. This line is parallel to this line. Right, how do we do that? When you hear about parallel or you hear slopes, well, you should think slopes anyway. It's all about, if they're parallel, they must both have the same slope. They must both have the same angle. So we we'll use the slope formula. I'll write that up here. This is all. These are all in your book, by the way. Uh, the slope formula is equal to. I'm trying to remember it. Y two minus y one divided by x two minus x one. You don't have to remember it. It's all in your book. Uh, you just need to do this question twice. Find the slope of this line and find the slope of this line. Let's say this is the, the two and the one. So y two minus y1, 3 minus 4 is, so let's do the question twice, uh, m1 is equal to, 3 minus 4 is minus 1, and then 7 minus 1 is 6, sorry, 3 minus 4, 7 minus 1, minus 1 over 6, that's minus 1 over 6. Let's do the question again then, with these two points, 0 minus 2, well that's minus 2, divided by 10 minus minus 2. 10 minus minus 2 is 12. And this, if we divide both of them by 2, we get 1 over 6, um, and there's a minus left over. Same answer. So they are parallel. You, you might, no, that's enough. That's enough uh, to get full marks, but you might want to write, therefore, three dots, uh, para, parallel. Um, okay, let's move on to part C. You know what, let me rub out a bit of this. I'll keep the formulas and I'll keep the picture. Okay, I've actually rubbed out some of the bits around the picture, but because they, they just ask us, what is the area of this triangle? Um, there is a couple of ways to do it. You could, you could work out the length. We have the length of here. So you could work out the length of all three sides, and then there's a formula for, uh, for using that. Uh, we could even work out angles, although that's a little harder, and get the thing that way. You could start making this into squares and rectangles around it, um, and work it out that way. But I think the easiest way is we use the formula. There's a formula for the area of a triangle, and that's equal to a half, I have to double check my notes there, um, x1, uh, y2, minus x2, y1, although these, these numbers can switch quite easily with these two special brackets around it. I'll talk more about these in a minute. Now this is uh, for point x1, y1, x2, y2, only two points. Oh, I've rubbed out one of these numbers. Um, only two points, whereas this question has three points. So what do we do? Hopefully that, that rings a bell then, what you do. We can't answer this. Let me, let me write it like this. I'll draw a, I'm not gonna draw this triangle exactly. We'll draw some other triangle up here. This triangle up here. If we want to find the area of this, we don't have a nice formula. The formula to do this is really big. Here's a formula. It's much bigger to answer this. But the formula to answer to do the area of this triangle is this. It's quite short. So this is the formula when one of the points is at zero, zero. 
Now, none of these points are at zero, zero, but it's not difficult to move a triangle, because this is the same area. It do, uh, triangles don't care if we move them. So let's move this triangle. Let's move, we can pick any side you want to move, but I'm gonna move this guy, change it to zero, zero, because it's, it's already <laughs> nearly zero. How did I do that? I didn't touch the Y, I just made the X and 10 smaller. That's really like just moving everyone to the left. Um, so if I made that 10 smaller, I better make this one. I don't touch the Y. I better make this 10 smaller. That's minus 12. I'm not going to touch the Y part. I'm going to make the X part 10 smaller. So that's minus 6. And that's it. We use those new numbers with this formula. So this formula, the area tells us it's equal to a half um, X1. I'll, I'll pick this as X1, sure. Is it, it is X1, yes. And that's minus 12 multiplied by y2, that's 6. And then we have minus, um, yes, minus x2. I'm, I'm a bit turned around there. Here we go, up here. Minus x2 is minus 6 multiplied, let's put a bracket around that, multiplied by y1, this guy down here, 2. Let's make sure I got all of them. I got 2 and a 12 and I got a... 6 and a minus 6. Yes, it looks fine to me. All right, let's multiply some of these out. We'll leave, leave this bracket alone till the end. It's a special bracket. We'll see why. 6 times minus 12 is minus 72. Minus by minus is plus. 6 times 2 is 12. And so inside, we we'll continue it up here. This is equal to a half Minus 72 plus 12 is equal to minus 60. Now here's what this bracket does. It's a special bracket. If the number inside it is a positive, we leave it alone. If it's a negative, like here, we just get rid of the negative. So this is the same as a half 60. That's all it does. It's the absolute value. So this is equal to half of 60 is 30. And that's, uh, that's the final answer. The fi yeah, the final answer to this question as well. The area of this triangle is 30 units squared. All right, I, hopefully that answers everything. If you have any follow-up questions um, or you see any mistakes I make, I, I do tend to make them, <laughs> let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.